Mr. Adi Godrej joins in right now with his views on what's been happening on the macro front. Mr. Godrej, thanks very much for taking out the time. Uh, you know, what are you of the opinion that right now, looking at how things are shaping up globally as well as our internal macros? Well, first of all, I feel the, the, oh, there has been an overreaction to Ben Bernanke's statement. I think very clearly the quantitative easing will only be phased out later in the year. I think the markets, both stock markets and the currency markets seem to have overreacted. For us in India, it is very important for us to see that we bring in action and policy that ensures that the rupee does not depreciate too much. Rupee depreciate depreciation could act against several Indian macroeconomic interests. For example, it would add to inflation, it would lead to fiscal deficit because costs of petroleum products would go up, it could add to current account deficits. So I think it is extremely important for the policies that are required to contain rupee depreciation to be announced as early as possible. It's good to hear that the finance ministry is working on it. The statements made so far seem to be on the right side. I think the RBI also needs to intervene uh, when the volatility is high. And if we can contain the rupee, to my mind, the ideal rate to contain the rupee at currently should be around 55 rupees to a dollar. Then I think our macroeconomic situation will be helped very considerably and we can start on a strong growth path once again. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Kothraj, just, you know, we, we had Mr. Uh, Dr. Mandik Singh Aluwale just some time back and he was pointing towards the fact that, uh, you know, the perception of India uh, globally seems to be more positive at this point. Do you agree with that? Are we still, because, you know, the way things are moving with regards to money being pulled out of emerging markets, does India still hold that, uh, you know, that flavor amongst investors? Well, I would say that uh, the perception of India uh, has improved in the last eight or nine months since we started announcing some reform policies. Unfortunately, the reform policy that need parliamentary approval such as GST and DTC and other such reforms or increase in FDI and insurance have been held up. But if we can continue to announce reform measures, I think it will have a positive impact. But right now, our concentration should be on attracting more foreign exchange into India, whether it is from NRIs, whether it's through the right kind of bonds, whether it is in FII and FDI particularly. FDI limits are sought to be increased. The government is working on it. It should be announced soon. We shouldn't let these announcements get delayed too much because the depreciation of the rupee, to my mind, is currently the biggest macroeconomic danger. Mm. But looking at the current liquidity crunch, Mr. Godruj, and, and you know, while at this point, uh, you know, Mr. Bananke has not pointed out was the fact that they're going to be, uh, you know, pulling back on uh, uh, the bond buying program, the second half and probably next year onwards when they said they're going to be pulling out, that's the time where the crunch is actually going to hit the market. And then where is the money going to come from to invest in, in all these assets, particularly in emerging markets? So there will be a lot of money available, except that this uh, uh, money in US dollars at close to zero interest would not be available. Interest rates would run to around 2 to 2.5% at that time. And we have to have policies to attract that money. After all, you must remember that what we need to attract into India is a fraction of the money moving around even in the developing world. And it's a question of our policies being more attractive than others. And then the money will come. And if our economy does well, if our stock market does well, certainly it will attract money coming in. So I don't think that's a difficulty. The question is, we, we, is that we should be ahead of the game, not behind the game. So, but we are behind the game. Good morning, sir. Prashant also joining in. You know, I, uh, so w one thing which stood out to me... Okay, I don't know. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, just, we'll just try and get that audio fixed. Uh, but okay, sir... add the mic back on. Okay. So I... Uh, Mr. Godrich, uh, good morning, sir. Prashant here. I hope you can hear me. Uh, 
Yeah. So my my uh, question yeah. is, you said yeah. we have to be ahead of the game, but the fact is, many say we are behind the game, and now we are paying the price. Mr. Aluwalia just a while back told me that, uh, and and this I think I've heard this for the first time. Individual governments can do very little when. Uh, you know, when, when, when uh, these are big global currency moves and he's perfectly right about it. Uh, you'd be wasting dollars. You said the government should try and hold the rupee at 55. But, uh, you know, should, wouldn't the RBI be uh, wasting precious dollars and it holds little of it by selling them in the market in what could be a big global move? My question essentially also is, why should a foreign uh, investor, a strategic investor who wants to set up shop, invest in plant machinery, do that with the rupee where it is and the governance where it is, sir? I mean, what is the incentive? You, you've held industry body positions earlier, you hold some now. What is your view? What would you, what would you tell uh, you know, uh, in response to that question? I'm not saying we should do it by intervening in the markets. We should do it by having the right policies. To attract FDI. For example, why put limits in FDI in most cases? Why have a limit? In many sectors of the economy, we allow 100% FDI. These limits are outdated. They need to be uh, changed. Of course, the finance minister has announced that he's planning to change them. That should be done early. Announcements should be made early. Or facilitation for FII investment should be expedited. There are many uh, uh, international investors who say they have certain difficulties with investing in India, even in the stock market. That should be liberalized. And uh, uh, there are some policies in certain commodities that need to be taken. For example, in edible oil, uh, our major supplier, which is the third biggest import into India after crude oil and gold, our suppliers from Malaysia and Indonesia have put export duties. We should counter it so that our costs come down, we can raise some revenue, we should put some import duties especially on refined edible oil. There are many policy decisions the government needs to take by discussing with industry to see to it that the rupee firms up. If that is done, then there can be a lot of movement forward on various fronts. Would you agree that the government is more in sync now with what needs to be done than it was a year ago? Would you say that? Most definitely. A year ago, there was almost no decision being taken in Delhi. After Mr. Chidambaram has become the finance minister, I see a lot of positive forward movement. There needs to be even more. We should anticipate the difficulties. For example, gold import. In last, just in May, we imported $8 billion of gold. And I, I think now with the, some of the steps taken, it will come down. These are necessary changes we need to make so that we are on top of our current account deficit problems. Right. Sir, many companies that we have spoken to recently are now talking about not a year, uh, uh, you know, a recovery which will take a year, two years. When you're talking about a three-year recovery, sir, I mean, you know, that is, that is scary. Uh, so, three years to, for recovery to pick up, to kickstart. Do you agree with that, sir? I mean, as an industry, uh, as somebody who's, who's no, not got interests in various no. sectors, do you see this as a three-year game now? No, not at all. With quick decision making, the right decision making, uh, cooperation between the opposition and the government in parliament, I think we can do it much faster. For example, if we can pass the goods and services tax, that alone would add two percentage points to our GDP uh, growth. And I don't see any reason why if the government and opposition collaborate and cooperate, it can't be done in a very short period of time. Uh, we in India tend to think that every decision, every movement forward takes a long time. And that's the way our politics have un unfortunately turned into. We should get away from that and think of getting important things done quickly. So I feel India could be on a 7-8% growth path very quickly if the right decisions are taken. Mr. Godwin, let's hope so. Thanks for joining in. Great to have you with us here as always with that industry perspective. Thanks very much, sir. Let's take a very quick break. We're back in two minutes. Markets are almost back in the green. Uh, back in the green. I mean, who would have thought? With Asia down, global markets off, 56.51 on the Nifty, just four points lower, and the rupee is absolutely flat as well. Back in two with more.